here in Pennsylvania, of course, when I go to do the Murph, it is 90 degrees outside, maybe even higher. So, that one burned. I am getting my ass kicked. This is very humbling. Anybody that wants to be humbled, try the Murph. What is up YouTube and welcome to a kick-ass video. So tomorrow we are doing the Murph. For those that don't know or want a refreshment of what the Murph is, it's a one mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 squats, and then you finish it with a one mile run. So you have the option to do it continuously, which means you let the clock roll, or you could do it, break it up into sets. So basically you would time each um, interval. So you would time the run, the push-ups, the pull-ups, the squats, um, and then that final run. So you could split it up like that and just add the times together, but I'm gonna keep it continuous, keep it real, authentic i'm gonna show you guys exactly how bad it's gonna be because i'm gonna i'm gonna give it hell i'll probably throw up um but it is the day before i'm gonna show you guys the shoes that i just picked up um these are the shoes that i normally train in also i'm gonna show you guys what i eat before um when i have a big event that i'm gonna go with like hyper competitive in i think your nutrition the day before is essential so i'm gonna show you guys the shoes now and the meal after so let's do it All right, so as I mentioned, I just picked up shoes, not only for this event, this is exactly what I train in. I had the old ones, but these are Nike Metcon. So basically what a Metcon is, is it's when you combine running and lifting. Um, it's more of like a, it's almost made for CrossFit, I would say. It's got a firm bottom, similar to like a Vans, but it's also shaped in a way to help you run if you know, you're doing like a CrossFit type workout, which the Murph is technically that. Because it combines aerobic exercise with some body weight and some more intense movements that you're gonna need like a sturdy shoe. It still has some flexibility, but it also still has firmness to be explosive on your lifts. So that's why I use these. Whenever I'm going for a heavy squat session, heavy bench, I just feel really good. Um, because at the end of the day, what it comes down to is when you're lifting heavy, if you don't feel supportive from the ground up, meaning your feet, you're not gonna feel supportive in any of your movements, whether it's bench press or, or squatting or deadlifting. So, these are the shoes that I use. You guys can get them anywhere. This is not sponsored. Um, I wish, Nike, you can sponsor me if you want. But uh, yeah, Nike Metcons. And for those that follow me, you know I ran a marathon not too long ago and these are the shoes I train in, Saucony Endorphin Speeds. These are my favorite running shoes, um, trainers anyways. Just to give you guys a reason why I'm not using this shoe here, um, it's because this is strictly for running. If I go in the weightlifting or if I do any like CrossFit type workout, I just feel really fragile on these. I feel like I can just roll my ankle in an explosive movement. I don't feel that that sturdiness. So I feel like these Metcons that I have on and that I showed you guys before are just gonna be better for an event like this. These shoes are almost like a Cadillac. I'm gonna go for like a long, nice and smooth run. I'm gonna use the Saucony Endorphin Speeds. If I want more of an explosive, quick like Ferrari type ride where I wanna get in, get out. I use the Metcons like I showed you guys. But as you guys know, I always say if you fail to prepare, be prepared to fail. Today we are going to be hydrating a lot because tomorrow's Murph is gonna be 91 degrees in Pennsylvania. So um, in Delaware, it's gonna be just as warm. So, you know, that's where I'm at right now. I just took a walk to break in these shoes, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I've been doing to prepare for this um, as far as my meals. So. I'm gonna show you guys my final meal to end up the day and describe kind of why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. And basically throughout the day today, I'm just gonna be prioritizing drinking water. I try to get at least a gallon a day. I don't think I need any more than that. Um, but yeah, that's that. All right, so pre-Murph, we're gonna have some grilled chicken breast strips. So basically, I get these at the grocery store just because they're convenient, they come in packages. I normally do cook my meat, my chicken, um, but just because I'm traveling right now, this is what we're working with. So I got some farm fresh 
grilled fresh market chicken. And then with that, I also have here some uh, long grain white rice. All right, real quick, I wanted to show you guys, I add this just to make it get, taste more like Chipotle. Um, it's just mild salsa, but gonna show you guys the finished product and explain exactly why I'm consuming this and why I consume this before I ran my best marathon ever. So stay tuned. So the science behind chicken and rice, why does everybody talk about this? Um, so for me, the main reason, I'm gonna keep it simple, the main reason I'm using this to perform the best for my Murph tomorrow is because one, it's high in carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are super important when it comes to endurance and explosive movements. Um, so that's why we have the rice. The reason I chose this carbohydrate source is because rice is the most digestible. Um, most people, including me, I don't know really of anybody that eats rice and gets bloated. I eat rice and it passes right through me. I feel amazing. Um, so like you hear of Stan efforting vertical diet, that's what this is. Um, and that's mainly how I eat. I eat potatoes and rice because the carbohydrates don't make me bloated and they give me enough energy to power through my next day and my day's worth of workouts. So that's why choose rice, potatoes, um, and that's pretty much it for carbohydrates. Sometimes bananas, blueberries, that's literally all I eat for carbs and oatmeal. And then also here we have some chicken breast. The reason I choose to have chicken breast is because basically today I did a little bit of workout pretty much active rest day, but besides the point, your muscles break down. The whole point of breaking down your muscles is so you can rebuild them. Without protein, you're not gonna rebuild them. Chicken breast is lean, um, so as you guys know, I am trying to get cut for summer. So, you know, it's important to have fat, but I already had my 90% lean beef today, so that had enough fat in it, so that's why we're eating chicken. So basically, long story short, the reason why I'm choosing this meal for my Murph tomorrow is because to prepare for tomorrow, I have my carbohydrates, and to fix what I did today, I have my protein, which is the chicken. So that is why I choose this meal, and overall, it just kicks ass because it digests like, like butter. It goes right down, and you don't feel it in your gut too long. So I'm gonna wake up feeling light, deadly, feeling like an absolute weapon. So with that being said, I will see you guys tomorrow. It's time to go crush the Murph. What is up everybody? We are just about to start the Murph. So before I do the Murph, I just wanna go over some things. I'm gonna flash a drone footage um, over this clip. I want you guys to see exactly where I'm running. So I'm gonna go out and hang a right. After that, you know, I go down this little incline. I know it's probably hard to tell from the drone. Little incline through a little hill at the bottom, and then I drop down again and run up a huge hill. See, when you run on hills, for me, that's a strong point going up. Going down is always harder, so it's a little contradicting. People don't realize when you run down hills, um, you need to drop your shoulders and you do this because it's really hard on your joint. So with the 20 pound vest, I'm really gonna try and focus on, you know, keeping that load off my uh, legs by dropping my shoulders and just, you know, more evenly distributing my weight. So when I come back around, I go down the big hill with a 20 pound vest on, it's gonna be pretty hard. So I'm gonna start to feel it then um, because I did the Murph already here before. And then when I come back, we're gonna just come back the same way I came in and finish up, wrap back up at the house. And then we're gonna start our push-ups, pull-ups, and our squats in the basement. So I plan to break this up into intervals of 10 for the pull-up. So I'm gonna do 10 by 10 which is 100, and then for the push-ups, I'm probably gonna do 20 at a time, and uh, then for the squats, I'm probably gonna do 30 at a time. Um, so pretty much just do 10 rounds each for each one, um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I think is gonna work the best for me, and I'll let you guys know along the way what I'm doing and keep you guys updated on you know my progress throughout the Murph. All you guys that are tagging me on Instagram, super inspiring, and I'm just ready to go kick ass. You guys hype me up, so I appreciate you guys, and yeah, let's get after it. We are officially starting the Murph here in a second. Um, Right here, if you guys are wondering what vest I'm using, it's a 511 tactical vest. Um, this is what I normally train with. 
The nice part is, is it just stays really snug on your body. It has like all the right straps. And this is what it's made for. It's made for CrossFit type workouts, Metcons. Um, and also I have the shoes on that I said I was gonna wear. So we're all souped up and ready to go. Um, got the backwards hat on to say more arrow. And also, last but not least, to track my progress and to take you guys through it and to show you guys proof of my times and everything, I have my Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus. So with that being said, we're gonna go kick off the Smurf. All right, so about to start the Garmin here. Three, two, one. Mile one, six, 626. I'll put it in the right hand top screen in case you guys wanna see. Six minutes, 26 seconds. Whew. Killed me, that was brutal. Now uh, we're gonna go on our way and knock out pull ups. And then I think I'm gonna go squats. And then I'm gonna finish it up with push ups and then do the, the run, so. Let's do it. Great, so I have the stopwatch running. Um, I have it on walk because I don't know how to use a stopwatch, but we're gonna quick get after it. Um, banging out 100 pull-ups. First round of 10, here we go. So we're falling short a little, but we're gonna break it into sets of five right now. Um, so we're at 25, so we got five more, then we'll be at 30. And we are two minutes and 30 seconds in. to say there's no need for chalk when you have calluses it's a great feeling you just get under the bar and just start yanking those pull-ups so we're gonna finish strong here after we finish this we're gonna head back upstairs do our squats our push-ups and then head right into the run again to finish off the murph so let's do it One more. Oh. All right, right there was 15 minutes and 15 seconds it took to do pull-ups. Now we're gonna quick head upstairs and finish up our push-ups and squats, which is gonna fly, so let's do it. Now we're gonna go into squats and finish up with push-ups. So. Here we go. Okay. 
We're gonna start out with sets of 20 and then maybe break it up as we go. But that was the first set. So now we're gonna move into push-ups. Finish strong, 100 push-ups. So we did our pull-ups, 100 pull-ups, 300 squats. Now we're gonna do 200 pull-ups or push-ups. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanted my legs to get a break before I run. So just switching up the, the, the order will help you during the merge. So here we go, 20. Feeling that one come up. Holding it back. So we're 25 minutes in, currently finishing our last set of push-ups. So right after this, we're gonna go kill ourselves on the run. I'm definitely gonna puke. I think so. Hopefully not. Or maybe, hopefully we do get out of the system. All right, let's do it. Seven, seven minutes and 42 seconds, 44 seconds, 42, I don't know. For those that don't know, here in Pennsylvania, of course, when I go to do the Murph, it is 90 degrees outside, maybe even higher. So, that one burned. That one burned a lot, but we got it done. And we're doing this 
for a bigger reason, bigger than ourselves. And that's the whole point when you do these things is that you know it isn't, it isn't necessarily gonna be easy, but if it was easy, everybody would be out doing it. That's why you gotta take pride when you do these things because you're, you're thinking about the bigger picture, the people that served, uh, the people that did what they did so we could do what we do today. So yeah, the pain that I feel, all that shit's temporary. Um, you know, these people that served, that their legacy stands forever. So that's why we do this and uh, God bless America. So I only allowed myself one sip of this during the Murph, just because I figured it slowed me down after my run. I had it uh, before my run, and I did feel it a little, I almost yacked halfway through. But now we can finish it and enjoy some some liquids. This is how I used to train in football. I would never really drink during practice until after. I don't know why. I just feel like liquids slow me down, but this feels good. 90 degrees, mmm. So I am gonna go over the time that I got um, once I finish up and calculate everything. I have it all on my watch, I just haven't even looked. Keep in mind I'm not a professional CrossFit athlete. I do strict pull-ups and you know, I did this just for the, like, the reasons that I stated before. I'm also 207, 208 pounds right now, so yeah. Not, not super ideal for this like body weight stuff, but not gonna make excuses. We got after it today and it kicked my ass. So before we go over our times, I'm going to show you guys my post-workout meal. Um, I got a question for you guys. So you see this chicken and rice, right? Well, this scale it zeroed out, but it said 220 grams. There's 240 grams of rice in here. So something doesn't add up. I don't know if this is off, which would suck, or if this is off. But I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with the rice being off because, I mean, it's a, it's a fucking scale. It's got to be right. And I need this to be right because I need to be shredded in three weeks. <laughs> so. All right, so before we dig in, we gotta add the proper sauces. So here we have a little bit of G Hughes sugar-free. Probably shouldn't have did that. G Hughes sugar-free barbecue sauce. Um, then we have some holy guacamole to get our fats in. So we got our fats to recover, our carbs, and our protein from our chicken. So, this is the ultimate bowl right here to recover after a kick-ass Murph. So, just like that, that's what it looks like. Gains. Gains right there. Let's stir it up a little. Get the guac in there. Mm, mm. So one last thing I want to show you guys is BPN just launched a strong food. I came home to this. Um, it's got 40 grams per serving of protein, 48 grams of carbohydrates, and 50 grams of fat. Um, this is the chocolate. And from what I heard, it tastes amazing. So I can't wait to try this out. This is like a meal replacement. Or like if you're bulking, it would be literally perfect. But shout out Christian Guzman for hooking me up with some energy drinks. Here we have, uh, I believe this is like apple or some sort, kiwi maybe. And then we have like pina colada and I'm not sure what's down there, but it looks orange. So uh, yeah, love 3D energy drinks and shout out Christian Guzman. I'll see you guys soon in summer shredding. So the moment in which you guys have been waiting for, what was my Murph time? How'd I go about it? So just to give like a quick overview and an explanation I went in with the mindset that I was gonna break up into sets of 10 for the pull-ups and then for the squats I was gonna break it into sets of 20 and overall all that went to shit once it started getting hard I couldn't you know I felt like I was taking too much time in between to uh, fulfill those goals of doing those sets so I was like screw it um, I'm just gonna go out and give it my all and just go on feel you know just go until I can't no more take a break go until I can't no more and take a break and I think that's how it has to be done if you don't have any experience in doing these things because 
if you plan too far ahead, you don't really know exactly how it's gonna, how your body's gonna respond. It's really hard to plan if, you, if you've never done it before, and that's what I tried to do. So disregard that, don't try what I did there. That's one lesson you can take away. Um, and that's probably the best lesson is just give it hell, have fun, and and you'll have a great time. Um, so overall, my time was 41.57, which I'm pretty happy about. As you guys saw in the drone footage, there's hills and shit, and uh, you know, it wasn't ideal. I had to run from the basement up here, and you know, it is what it is. I gave it hell, I did my best, and that's all I could ask for, and that's all I wanted to do. And that's the, the reason for is to suffer for those that sacrificed everything. So with that being said, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Drop a comment, drop a like, stay corn fed. I'll catch you guys in the next one.